one of my favorite guests. Never a dull moment. Never. When the guy at 50 Cent is in the building. Yeah, I'm time. Man, yeah. Baby. Curtis Jackson, ladies New and York. gentlemen. What's up? Curtis Jackson is our guest today. 50 Cent is here. Hello, Fifth. Oh, man, I'm excited, Ange. I'm back. What does that mean? Getting back in the groove of things. You Are know? you? Like, yeah, I, I, I had an opportunity, you know, launching the, the first joint off of this record, mm -hmm. the New Day record, and it was interesting because there was a version of it. That I'm we, so that confused. We were Wait a minute. I'm so yes. confused about this song. So Alicia. I thought this was Alicia Keys' song, New Day. Yeah, well, the way it first came out, it was all And then Alicia. there was a commercial, and it said, 50s new single, single? New Day. Day. And I, I thought, that sounds like somebody's arguing. Now, I had the record <laughs> for like four months. Right. But Dre, like, Dre, originally the record was recorded for Detox. And he said uh -oh. to Alicia, and then there was a chorus on it that Esther Dean recorded. It was like a darker version of the record. Right. She was feeling like the brighter side of things, like a new day and mm -hmm. inspirational vibe. You know, she had added the keys to it. So when I heard it, I was like, Dre was unsure if he wanted to put that on Detox because he wasn't done doing it. It doesn't sound stuff. like a Detox record. song. And then I'm like, that's perfect for what I'm doing. You know, I right. need to, you know, do that anyway. Because I the, I got all of the darker music. Cause I Wait wrote a minute, so, so much. whose song is it? it? It's my record. Is it the on version. her album too? Yeah, but it's a different version. Like, oh. there's an entire, it, it sounds a little similar, but Swiss reproduced the entire track. Right. Oh. So it's like, her version is a different production. Yeah, you can hear it, you can hear it. Yeah. Is there anything weird or strained now with you and Swiss or Alicia? No. Actually, I went to visit I went over to go see him. Oh, you did? Studio, oh, so this studio. is all good. There's no weirdness yeah. or badness or... Well, you know... It, weird for a second. It got interesting between Jimmy... Oh, label, head and, to label yeah, stuff. Because, you know, Dre, a lot of time, long time in the studio making records, he ain't trying to hear that you took a Dre record. Mm. Under any circumstances, right. you know what I mean? That bill is serious. <laughs> yeah, <I can't. laughs> what does that production bill look like my lord like a million dollars a year so when the song comes out is there a video on either party well the, no we were actually scheduled to shoot a video and then the Chris Lighty oh. situation took place so I came back stopped and everything it kind of stopped it how does that I mean I know personally I'm sure it's devastating yeah. to you. I mean I don't know I don't want to put words or thoughts always, into your I've mouth I've worked with Chris the entire time Angie like, no I know like the actual mixtape run everything right. And um, like every day, daily, yeah, pretty much. Like you know, I mean, he's had his the opportunity to to work with a lot of other people in different time periods. Like at the same time, mm -hmm. like he worked with Buster. He never would break that relationship because he no, their he relationship is like yeah. brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that, that. He's like, nah, I got to do that. And then um, you know, like that. There was opportunities. Like I think the Soldier Boy relationship is really coming from me. Yeah, mm. and the Soldier wouldn't even listen to them. <laughs> like I had to get on the phone with him like yo you gotta do this B and then he kinda got into no but we absolutely everybody I mean within the business or whatever people absolutely associated you and Chris yeah like, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the deals the brand extension and deals that that my portfolio is what uh, offered reasoning to Warner Brothers for brand assets mm. for the company he created to, to do the extensions between other artists and right so how do you deal with something like this? You get a loss, an unexpected Yeah, it's a, it's a huge adjustment. And then you got to take into account, do you want to hire a new management or do you want to hire an internal person that does corporate uh, brand management? Right. And deal with everything on the outskirts. Like, Puff would work with Chris and have him deal with his music business. Mm. He dealt with the rest of his business. Right. In-house. So his staff and everybody else that was there would be a part of that process and then you right because for somebody like you it's like two folds it's right it's like somebody that you knew personally right so from a personal perspective i'm sure you feel yeah a, a, and, and a million different ways about what absolutely. happened absolutely like i don't believe i honestly can't wrap my head around the idea of him shooting himself mm. you know so i i mean i don't have all the information so i don't have, you know point or say anything other than what's being said publicly right mm. But I don't believe that. You, you know, don't even just because my personal that interactions with him, right. and it's never gave an indication that that was even possible. You know, like the like the first thing I see is he owes five million dollars, and he doesn't owe five million dollars. I'm sure he doesn't actually owe three hundred thousand, and he wasn't in a hurry to pay. Mm. Like you know, it's not like vacation that there was ever a point that the vacation was being missed. Right. 
and lifestyle is like I you know I get to that when I get to that and then away from that when the the five million dollar bill was there I I gave him a million dollars I loaned him a million dollars that he paid me back and the interest on it was another two hundred thousand so take that five turn that into six point two and then say it's down to three hundred thousand ain't no reason to do that over money huh. you know what I'm saying at that <clears throat> point you done took care of all your bills man. Right. You know, so it just none of it made any any sense to me, you know, because of that. And then just the all of the unanswered questions. Whenever you're in the gray areas, because something ain't really right. How do you deal with that? I try to. I try not to think about it. I try to um. try to move forward, and because you know, it's ill as for me, it, it'll do. I'll develop a, a anger. Yeah, and it, and it's more like because I'm used to responding. To some, if somebody does something to me in any way make me uncomfortable, I respond by making them more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then maybe it gives them an example and it says, leave me alone. And then, like, when they stop, I know to stop because I know what happens when we go completely head to head. It's always a bad outcome. Mm -hmm. But I offer reasoning for them to not come playing around me. And then in, in this case, you just go, well, there's nobody to really offer that to. You just want to be yeah. mad, but then what do you... Yeah, who who, who can I give it who to? Can you, right. What's going to happen to Violator? That's over. It's over. That Well, to me, that's over. Like, there's nobody mm. that, that... That could take that over, yeah. Right. Yeah. That, just, yeah. It, it was the experience, and just how wow. long you've been involved that it makes you uh, respond to things differently. Like, if you say... As, like, how long you've been in your profession. Mm -hmm. There's nobody that... Like, you don't really see... There's not an easy replacement in your slot. The time of the day, if you just decide to just go, they'd be trying to figure out how to to fix that. I agree 100%. Difficult. Yeah. It was crazy because even at the funeral, I, I've known Chris since the tunnel. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, okay. I mean, over the years, I, I haven't seen him as much. You guys have been busy. <laughs> okay. Working. But it, it was interesting and, I don't know, some, a little comforting, but also like at, at the at the services, hearing everybody's stories and how much he meant to everybody and yeah. how much of an influence he has had in this business in so many different ways that maybe I know about you and mm. I know about Tip and Busta. But, right. But to hear all the different stories and all the all the stuff that and, and hearing Red Alert talk about him carrying records back in the day and and you know what was kinda, interesting about that like because like like Buster like the things that he said was, was really good to me yeah right. Buster, the Buster uh, was speaking on behalf of Chris and he was telling stories that Chris has been holding him down for so long and all they wanted to do is make get this money and they finally got it. it and then Buster. Spent it all, <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. you call Chris, and Chris would help him get it again, and he do it again, and, and he do it again.